Hello guys, Reza here. Welcome to my channel. In scenarios where your scene demands temporary actors, you can harness the capabilities of a sequencer's spawnable feature. Once the sequence concludes, the actor is automatically removed from your level. So join us in this tutorial as we unveil the remarkable potential of spawnable actors showcasing how they elevate the functionality of our level sequencer inside unreal engine and making this an invaluable tool for addressing various shot base requirements let's get started Let's start with the scene that I'm going to use for this step-by-step -step tutorial. It's Gladiator Arena Environment Kit, available on Epic Games Marketplace. Here I am inside Unreal Engine and I've got the scene loaded and all ready to go. I did some cleanup in the outliner so we can find things easily. All right, let's say I pick a, an angle and I would like to make a camera create a level sequencer and basically put my shots together. That sounds pretty straightforward to me. I'm just going to go right click new folder and create a folder for level sequencer. Within that, you can either go into cinematics and level sequence, or you can create a level sequence here. It doesn't matter which way you go. You eventually need to save it first. And that's why we created that folder. So I'm just going to call that LS spawnable, which is the topic that we are going to focus on. Let's create a camera. I know that there are cameras in here, but there is a reason that I want to create a brand new camera. So this icon will help us to do that. Create a new camera. I'm going to click. It appears in the outliner and under the camera cuts in my sequencer. I'm going to right click on this actor in the outliner. I'll go to edit, rename, and call it something that I can distinguish. Cinecam, spawnable. Enter. And of course, next is to make some adjustments because I feel like the lens is a bit too tight here. So I'm going to go into lens settings, probably choose 12 millimeter it's wide enough to give me a range and making sure that the focal length is set correctly so i'm going to make this column in focus draw debug focus plane that confirms it and i'm good to go let's say that's something that i kind of like and I feel like this is going to work, but of course I need to talk to the client and show this to the client. Let's say that's final. All right, I'm going to save all. Let's talk about possessable actors first. And possessable actors, every time we talk about possessable actors is all the actors that you have in the scene. Let's say I'm going to bring um, one of the static meshes in here, I'm going to go into track, add to sequencer, add SM building four into a sequencer. That's a possessable actor. And you can see it shows that this actor is inside this sequencer, LS spawnable sequencer. That's fair enough. Easy. However, if I look at my newly created camera, you can see that there is a, an icon right next to it, like a thunderbolt yellow or orange icon. That means this camera is owned by the sequencer. It's not just a typical actor that I put inside the sequencer. This belongs to the sequencer. Without this sequencer, this actor doesn't even exist. You don't believe me? I'm going to close the sequencer. Keep an eye in here. As soon as I close it, the camera is gone. 
So it only appears if I open LS spawnable camera sequencer. There I have it. And the indication for it is LS spawnable with a Thunderbolt icon right next to it, which is also available on the track inside my sequencer. It allows you to put things temporarily inside your sequencer and in real world outside this sequencer they don't even exist. Let's put that into practice and uh, use it as a case study. I'm gonna pilot to this spawnable. Let's say we present this to the client and the client loves the composition. Obviously, I take no credit for this scene, but let's say we work on this scene inside Unreal Engine to do some camera work. We fix the composition, we show this to the client, and he or she may say, I love it, but it would be nice to have a small version of this rock somewhere around here. We may scatter them around and that kind of creates that frame that we want and one in here kind of changes the weight of the composition. I may not like this. Uh, can you do that? And of course, one way is to go into your actual level and duplicate this guy, which may mess up with other cameras that you've carefully placed in the scene. The other method is to make the duplicated version of this rock a spawnable actor. With that, it only works for this shot and outside this shot everything snaps back to normal as if it didn't even exist. Let's put that into practice and see how we can make an actor spawnable because in our case Cinecam it was spawnable at birth but how can we bring a normal actor and make it spawnable? All right I'm just going to press ctrl D to duplicate it large block 103 is the one that I have right now. Let's move it forward. I'm just going to scale it ever so slightly, rotate it, move it around into the scene, add that here. I'm going to make another one duplicate it and push this one back. Maybe make this one slightly bigger. A little bit of a distance in here it catches some light which is nice i'm going to rotate it around bring it in and let's call it a day we added these two actors let's bring them into level sequencer so we can make them spawnable and uh, basically have it as a shot based solution as opposed to permanent let's say hypothetically we show this to the client and he says yeah that's all i needed two extra blocks, the composition looks good, go with it. Now, without being worried about oh, how this is going to look with other cameras, let's bring those into level sequencer. So block three, 103 and 104. I'm going to press control A to bring both of them in. Another way is to go to track, add actor to sequencer. Of course, you already know that. We covered this in our introduction to sequencer. First step is done. Second step, let's make them spawnable because yes, they indicate that they're inside LS spawnable level sequencer, but we don't see any icon. So it means that they're spawnable. So right click, convert to spawnable both of them get that thunderbolt light and now if i go in here both of them have an additional track which you can turn on and off indicating that now in this particular camera these two guys only exist within the sequencer outside of that they're not even there how cool is that if i save and close the sequencer, look at that, they vanished. If I bring back the sequencer, they're there, they will appear in our renders and that will make our imaginary client happy.
Now the power of spawnable actors doesn't end here. You can use lights and make them spawnable. Let's say you get another note from the client saying that oh, the stone here, it's a bit dark. You know, we've got so many bounce lights in the scene. It would be nice to add a little bit of illumination in there. You'd be like, okay, uh, I don't want this light to be seen by, let's say, this camera right here. So it has to be spawnable. Let's go in there and bring in a point light. I'm just going to place that point light here maybe bring it a little bit higher so it doesn't have an impact on the ground you can use light linking as well something like that so we get a little bit of a rim light so you can see before after before after doesn't impact the scene much but it gives us a really nice result obviously from other camera angles this will be super visible so it has to be a spawnable type of light. Let's bring it into our sequencer. Same method, make it spawnable. By the way, I'm going beyond the bounds of the sequence. So why don't I go in here and keep playback, uh, lock it so we don't go outside. Um, I'm going to go in here and press Control A to bring it into our level sequencer. You can obviously go in there and change the order. It really doesn't matter. And now I can comfortably go in there and make this spawnable, convert to spawnable. So our sequencer now owns this point light and you can kind of name it something meaningful. But the beauty of that is if I go and save and close the sequencer, this rim light is gone. I'm going to bring back the sequencer and pilot to my camera and there it is. So you can see how invaluable and powerful I definitely encourage you to use spawnable lights instead of placing multiple lights in your level and have to be manually enable and disable them per shot. You can simply just add a required light to your shot as an spawnable actor and they will exist only for that particular shot with no unnecessary clutter in your level. Now a few points that um, I need to go through and we are pretty much finished with this tutorial. First one, how to make this possessable again. We don't want this, let's say I kind of like it now and I do not want this to be removed from my shot. I just want this to be permanent. And there are times when you have happy accidents, you put a light somewhere and you're like, yeah, that actually works for all the shots. I'm just going to keep it. Right now, that is not the case. And this icon is not something that you can click on to be able to toggle on and off. To do that, you right click and you go convert to possessable. And from this point onward, this light stays no matter what. Another point to make is when you have master shots. So let's say this is shot one and I'm going to place that into my root sequence. What is going to happen to that? So I'm going to bring this back to a spawnable. If I right click, you can see I have spawnable level, persistent level, which is this level right here. I can go into spawn object owner and say only this sequence, the root sequence or external. This sequence is obviously the default setting, which allows uh, any actor to be spawned and destroyed for the duration of the current sequence only. The root sequence is our master sequence which causes the actor to spawn and unspawn for the duration of the master sequence, if you have any uh, spawn actors to use. And again, this causes the actor to be spawned and destroyed outside the bounds of the current sequence. Another question you may have is, can you use this in a different level? Now, if every actor 
within your sequencer is a spawnable actor, then it is possible to reference this sequence in multiple different levels and the actors, spawnable actors, will appear. And last but not least, if you drag an object, I'm just going to make this floating window. I'm going to go to Arena, Mesh, and let's uh, pick this column right here. If you drag and drop this object straight into your level sequencer, it is by default an spawnable actor. So something to keep in mind, if you drag and drop, by default you're converting it to spawnable actor. All right, that's all the sort of side tips that I could think of. Obviously, there are many scenarios that uh, I may not think about right now. If you have any questions, do let me know. That is it. Anything that you need to know about spawnable actors and possessable actors and the difference between the two, it's an incredible capability that you can actually bring minor tweaks to your composition per shot without destroying anything or without leaving things behind or adding clutter permanently. I hope you found this video useful. Definitely follow me on uh, X, well, Twitter, and Instagram and Reddit for forthcoming work and news. Have a great rest of your day. Until the next time, see you guys later.